Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. This is a review of Magnet Zero by Henry Harrius and Armando C. Before we do that, please like, subscribe, check the little bell icon so you get all the notifications of when I go live and all that, because it's pretty unpredictable at the moment, <laughs> as is life. And, uh, and check out cardmagiccourse.com. It will mean the world to me if you just go onto the page, check it out, and if you like it, sign up, and you can get some free stuff on there as well to get a taster so you know what you're going to buy. I'm very, very proud of it. It's huge. Live sessions every week, or most weeks, except when it's Christmas and stuff, um, or except when the kids just poorly enough to stay at home <laughs> but, and many other reasons but it's usually uh, every week god i'm waffling aren't i and uh, and we upload them they go onto the course as well so it's like you get free workshops every week as well as the 200 plus videos thanks blimey that went on a bit didn't it but there you go well done uh, so uh, magnet zero which i thought was called magneto for a lot of time, a long time, and it's not, it's Magnet Zero. So I am awfully glad I do watch the download before I review this stuff. Um, this is a, a little surprise. I didn't know what this was. I, I love doing this sometimes. I, don't, I purposely don't look at trailers sometimes when I get stuff. If I get um, things that are released from people who I really like, I purposely don't look at them and I get them and I get all excited. It's like Christmas all over again. Um, I'm a bit of a Henry Harris fanboy, so there is a bit of confirmation bias going on here because I have liked pretty much everything he's released. I love his Rubik's Cube stuff. I like him. I like the way he comes across. I like the, his, his, the way he thinks. You know, I've used most of the stuff I've got from, from him on stage in routines and, and he just kind of knows, seems to know what's going to work. Um, and it's, and, and for, for that, just that hard hitting strength. So when I saw this, I was like, all right, this is totally different. It's not a Rubik's Cube trick. This is a PK coin effect. So you you take the uh take a sharpie out you you do it you're gonna say you're gonna do a trick where you're gonna move a coin you don't have to say that actually don't say that i don't know why i said that nobody says i'm gonna do a trick when i'm gonna move a coin uh <laughs> that doesn't happen but you do it you, the trick is that you you balance a coin on the lid of a sharpie you isolate it you can put a glass on top of it and you prove that you can't you know that you can't wave your hands about or blow it or anything like that and you can get them to actually concentrate on the coin um do whatever you want them to do and the coin will kind of drop off of the the pen the pen lid and it, it doesn't just drop off it kind of it looks like it's got a bit of power over it you can't if you use a heavier coin it, coin it doesn't but if you in the uk if you use a 10 pence piece or something like that the, one of the lighter coins it really pops off that that lid and as soon as i saw it i kind of went oh i really like that it looks it looks great it looks really good it almost looks like a thread trick um but obviously you've got the glass over it and it can't be uh, and then I opened it up and saw it and thought, just, just great. So it's as simple as it comes as a, as a concept, isn't it? Which is nice. You know, there's no kind of ambiguity to this. The people are going to remember what happened here. They looked at a coin that obviously you can do it yourself, but I'd suggest as they do that you get the spectator to do it or a, a group of spectators. Um, Armando has people around there all going like this and it doesn't work. And then he goes to rub your hands together, concentrate, and just pops off that, that coin and that lid and it just... Just looks phenomenal. Uh, so it's really super easy. Okay, there's no really work to be done here. Obviously, in performance there is, um, but I just think it looks like a really fair and magical thing for people to experience. Now, of course, you've got the initial routine, which is which he goes through, um, and they go through everything you need. You know, all the information you need of how to work it, how to charge the thing, and how to. I'm sure that's not giving too much away, but. Um, and then and it's it's really well made I'll, I'll give it that as well you can tell it's gonna last i think it's there's not gonna be any problems that and then henry tends to make things of quality i mean his rubik's cube stuff uh, that i've got still works and i've used it a hell of a lot and um, he kind of makes sure it's packaged and 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 made with quality um and it's simplicity is its strength really now you do have to be careful with with routines like this because you could throw them away it is based on one moment and i've seen even stage shows when i found that a moment can be really wasted. That moment is a coin falling off of a, a, a pen top. So if you're not careful, you could, it could be a bit anticlimactic. The way it isn't is you, you do the build up, you, you frame that moment with space. That's how it makes, you know, you build up the tension and they do talk about building up the tension, that thing of it failing once. Okay, let's try again, but really concentrate this time and it happening that time and, and, and then you framed it and, it and it can be quite a kind of, 
quite a spooky thing. Great for seance work, things like that as well. Obviously, the Sharpie lid may not be if, if you're doing more kind of gothic stuff, but it's but it's it's got a, a, it, it can be used with great power. This stuff, um, but with great power comes great responsibility. I've got nowhere to go with it. I just felt like I had to say it. He then talks about the, the what different ways you can use this, and this is where I thought it came into its own as well. So the basic routine is great, and it's all you'll ever need. But then you said, you know, you can do this virtually. And I was thinking, how do you do this virtually? Because people might think you're just nudging a table. Well, of course, you stand away from it, and you get someone to touch a screen, and that can work. And then you can do a. He does a beautiful thing with a shadow. If you've got slightly dim light, people can use the uh, the light from their phone and use the shadow. And, and, and I thought, God, that's a really good thing as well. And it made me think of uh, Tobias Dostal's work with, with his shadow work with Silhouette. And then it made me actually think of the uh, his phone vanish. It made me think, oh, you could then do that. And anyway, I'm just cutting this in. That's why it looks all different. Because uh, since doing the review, I've played with it. Um, since doing the review, I've performed it, uh, recording it. And the only thing that you've got to be aware of, I don't think it's a real negative, but I think it's something you've just got to be aware of, that there is a sound element to this, okay? So if you're trying to perform in silence and there's a really quiet thing, you've just got to be aware that if you don't control certain things, there may be some, some auditory uh, issues. So it, I, I found it fine um, because in most cases there's ambient noise there's things you know in a normal situation i've performed it on zoom that was absolutely fine but just be aware that if you that you've that this this isn't a silent uh thing it, it there is a, a certain bit of talking shall we share, shall we say and talking something that i clearly can't currently do anyway but so so it kind of looks like it will fit in with a lot of different things this but i think it's it's really nice to, to give the spectator that power and, and to play with something you just know is going to work, that isn't difficult, that's super easy and genuinely, genuinely magical. I think it's a really good piece this. And he also says you can, I'm not going to go any further, but he says you can also just use it as a thumper. That's all I'll say. If you know what I'm talking about, then you already know. Um, but that's another thing. There's kind of versatility with how you actually use this prop as well, rather than just using it for this routine. I uh, very much like this. And there is no doubt that my next virtual show, this is going in. I'm not just saying that. Again, there was no reason for me to. I'm not um, affiliated with Henry stuff, but it's, but it's going in because I just think that lovely moment where it just falls, it just, it's just lovely. It's, it's kind of like you've honed everything in this tiny little moment and that happens and you've got this almost, this release. Um, I love it. I think it's great. I love it. I, and I really like all PK routines really in, if they're done well and done that in that way. And also, I've just thought of something else. <laughs> so I keep having to reset everything up. And so the light's going to look different in all of these. There's a way to do this where the pen lid doesn't move, okay? And, and the, um, so the coin comes off. And the point of that is it looks like you're controlling the coin. But I actually think, and they supply something that allows you to do this. So I think it actually looks better with the, when the pen lid falls over as well. And I know it, it shouldn't, but it, it kind of, if you're going to make something fall over, it, it would make sense that it would all go. And I think that sort of almost looks more, um, more magical really when the whole thing almost just sort of tips over. So, so you, the point is you can do this without, you can make this so the pen lid falls over as well. You can do it with the pen lid stays static. But my feeling is, my, and please tell me if you think I'm wrong, is that it kind of looks quite good when the whole thing drops over. Um, it kind, of, it kind of makes it pointless balancing on there if you're going to move the whole thing, but it's it's to me it looked quite magical when I first did that, or, or thought it did, but let me know what you think. It's kind of mentalism, but it's magic, and it kind of crosses the border a little bit well, uh, uh, um, crosses the border uh, quite well between the two, I think, but depending on how you present it, but how, however you present it, if it's done with skill and awareness, I think it's it could be a really good showpiece, this. Uh, so that's um, Magnet Zero. Um, nothing really negative about it, unless it packs up in a few weeks, but I'm pretty sure it won't. But it's, I think it's, you know, there's no angle problems. There's, there's, there's no skill to it really, other than the performance. And uh, it's got a lot going for it. Uh, so have a look below at all the details uh, where you can get this. And again, thank you to Henry for sending me uh, this. And please like, subscribe, check out Car Magic Course. And thank you very, very much.